What is up guys? We are back with another video. Today I'm gonna to show you guys the behind the scenes of a music video that we shot in 48 hours. It was crazy, there was so much work to do, but the music video turned out amazing. I'm gonna take you guys from all the way from pre-production, like location scouting, uh, shot listing, and um, take you through production and camera prep as well, so that you guys can see all the steps that I went through to make this music video happen. I had the pleasure of being the cinematographer on this project. I kind of directed too a little bit because the artist was also the director, but that's okay. Um, but I want you guys to see the behind the scenes. It's very raw. There's a lot of good information in there, a lot of fun moments, and I hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys at the end of this video. Okay guys, so we're gonna take you on our location scout. And what is that? Why am I wearing sunglasses indoors? Who knows? But we're gonna go on a location scout and we're gonna take you with us. So, let's go. I'm a little cameraman. Let's go. Who, who, who forgot their keys? One hour. Who forgot their keys? Okay, we got too excited. Now you can back. Guys, welcome to your back. We're getting my cart. Okay guys, so we're gonna take you on a location scout. I talk about this all the time in my videos. Um, this is probably one of the most essential parts in pre-production as a cinematographer or director. This is where you get the time to go see the locations prior where you can make a plan. We're, in, we're shooting a music video and we're gonna shoot that in about a week. So we're in pre-production phase. So myself and the director are going to go see one of our main locations, which is a house. Oh man, that looks cool. Like this is like the framing app I have here. Mm. So you can see with the lenses and stuff, like this is our widest frame, but just looks pretty, pretty neat. Man, you can play around with it a lot. I'm just gonna check out the outside just for like um, logistical things. One thing now, being on this location and seeing this in person, I can see how high the lights have to go to get it through the window. So I bring my lasering measure tape I turn her on, and then I just measure it with distance, 15 feet and 6 inches. There's some really important things to keep in mind when you're checking out a location, like where are the windows, how high are they, like can you get stands up there, and most of the time, like when you move on to bigger things, you'll have lifts, so yeah. So here's another thing I'm going to do, measure the floor to ceiling height to see how high, if I need any rigging, so it's 8 feet, 11 inches. And then also, when I see the location, I look at the rigging that's already in here. So these beams here could help me potentially rig up lights, cameras, whatever I need. Um, so these are really important things to keep in mind as well. And then also kind of seeing where all these windows are here. So, and keeping in mind where the sun's going to be. So the sun sets over there in the west. So you can see that the sun will come directly into this room around 6 p.m. So, um, that's a, another thing to keep a, a note of. So now I'm measuring the length of the window here. If we can all shoot during the day, I cover this full thing in black fabric. So I now know it's 23 feet long. So if we wanted to shoot a night scene during the day, I would need at least 23 feet of black fabric, negative fill, to put onto this window so that I don't let any sunlight in and so it will look like nighttime. So. So these are things that I can plan out in my head prior um, instead of showing up on the day and not having the equipment for it. It's a framing app where you can put your camera settings and your lens settings here and you can find frames at locations. Take pictures of the locations so that you can create your lighting plans and stuff. Very cool. He's standing outside a window. Yep. Do you think it will kind of good or like you also have like this kind of uh, we could totally cheat it. Like, you know, like you could have whoever's in the bedroom's reaction mm -hmm. and then cheat the, the background out front. True. You know? True. But you also need to get her looking at, like, from my perspective, looking up. Yeah, 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 totally. So, like, That's you cool. have her looking, so say she looks left to right camera, you just do the opposite for you when we're looking down at you. So you look right to left and it will cut perfectly. Oh, hey, how's it going? So right now we are prepping. It's going to be a lot of fun this weekend. We're having like an amazing music video going on. Right now we have the Ari 11. It's going to be really sick. And we have like really cool 
lenses we have. Right now we have it all, we have a 20 millimeters lens. Um, I believe it's the Baltica, probably I'm spelling it or pronouncing it wrong, but it's European, so it's Baltica. Anyway. <laughs> what lenses did we choose for this music video? Well, we chose the Super Baltars. A little history here. Super Baltars are very vintage glass. They shot a lot of the original movies with them. Star Trek, um, sort of Citizens Kane, like all these kind of things. Really old movies. These this glass is from the 50s and I kind of want to go with this because for my style I like being unique and different from everybody else so I try to go with really f***ed up looking lenses and that's what these are super boltars they're beautiful so recently this company called Kawa this Japanese brand Kawa um, they bought the uh, original glass manufacturing element designs and then they remade it with this company called white optics so you get this new age kind of cinema housing for these lenses and you get new um, consistent coatings for all the glass um, because with the old original ones none of them were consistent some lenses would shift really warm some would shift really blue um, and it made color grading a nightmare what's up i'm hunter i'm the gaffer um i supply lighting and good lives uh, all of our outfit boxes fit vertically along in here Got our AC here, so it's quick to grab, uh, so I don't have to go looking for it in the truck. Same with like little grip pieces, like our pipe clamps, you know, Carlinis, all that stuff. You want to be able to access all that little stuff quickly when you're working out of a truck. We got some uh, bounces, diffusion frames. What lights are we using? Um, we got two Aperture 1200Ds, which are packed back there. Um, we got our Aperture 600D, we got our Fresnel lenses, which are really nice to have. Um, we got some nan lights, C stands, Hapcher Nova, um, and the light mat. Then there's still plenty of room for camera stuff. And you always want to put camera stuff on last because that's always the first thing to go out on set. And the uh, camera has to be set up um, before anything else uh, really happens. Because if the camera's not going, nothing's going. Welcome to my uh, Sprinter van. This is uh, my personal. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> my personal gaffer van um you know we're just balling out here with all these lights just kidding we are not we are poor and we're renting these hey miguel what do you do here on set hi i'm here pulling focus today um the first assistant camera camera first assistant uh follow me on instagram <laughs> miguel angel hello <laughs> my name is peter i'm gonna be key grip today Okay, so um, just a little explanation here. We were trying to brainstorm how to rig up our backlight in the ceiling here. It was our first time to this location, and I know I always talk about how important location scouts are. They really are because um, we weren't able to location scout this studio because um, we got it last minute. Our previous studio totally bailed on us last minute. I think it was literally that day, that morning, the artist got a call saying from the studio saying, hey, we can't give it to you guys. So this was a favor from somebody else. So we were trying to brainstorm how we could make this studio work because it was very, very, very different from the original. Um, and we didn't really know the rigging capabilities in this space but luckily peter our key grip was just a true legend and just went to town with the rigging what's the specific reason you're choosing this camera i did it chris, it, chris? Yeah. i think it was for the open gate format it has this very specific look <laughs> So what's going on here, Chris? So we're setting up the next scene here. We're going into some cool uh, TV scene. We're gonna set up the set right now. I'm gonna put a TV here. He's gonna be sitting here. All we're gonna do some cool study cam shots. And then we're gonna go back and do some tripod shots. And then we're gonna go to the next location and it's gonna be unreal. Yeah? Hey, Miguel. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm taking light meter readings of the light values of my backlight just to know how much light I'm getting. So with these high contrast scenes here, um, we're playing with just a backlight. So 
that's how you kind of get that three-dimensional like um, look to an image is like having just a backlight right because then you have shadow facing the camera and the shadow is what's going to make things look three-dimensional and give that depth to it so anyways we have this backlight and it's quite a high contrast scene but what the aria is doing really beautifully is still holding so much information in the shadows and the shadows almost seem a lot softer like when you shoot on red i find the shadows are so sharp and it doesn't look too nice and pleasing this feels very natural very organic the shadows just have this beautiful wrap the highlights are wrapping in it's just looking really soft and really really good um yeah it's just insane it's blowing my mind because reds do not have this capability i mean if you're color grading it it would take a lot of work to do that but this re is just doing it out of the gate it's just such high dynamic range that it's just not pitch black it's just beautiful so so good oh that's awesome it's literally just like two light setup and it looks great it, it would look good with even just like one light too but uh no nah, i think the slash there does a lot yeah. our goal here was to make it look good right <laughs> I think it would be way cooler if we were able to like extend the line, but the problem is it would, the studio is so small, so it would pollute their faces and make them front lit. Mm. It would be really nice to extend that. Maybe we could do it with AI generative fill, maybe. The trick here is if you have a really plain white box, or you could use color temperature to uh, spice it up. I always set my color temp to 4000, so with daylight, it makes it blue, baby. What's happening? So we're setting up the set here. We added some. Uh, tracker marks for all uh, the VFX that's going to be in the TV here. Um, we got a little visual storytelling. Let's check it out. So we have the uh, the VHS camera right here where he was filming their loving moments of their relationship. And um, in this scene, we don't know what's on it, but we have this rose here that resembles love. So it's kind of like a little visual storytelling moment. So pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, another reference from. Um, um, the Matrix, you know, a lot of black and white, a lot of monotone um, colors going on, and we're rocking the same light. Still got the backlight. We're doing that because of speed and time. We're, you know, behind, but you know that's okay because we got one light set up, and we're gonna be fast, and we're gonna get out of here. I sent the boys to go wrap out, but um, yeah, we're setting up the steady cam in low mode so you get lower, um, so that we can do a steady cam shot from the TV. <laughs> over to Neo there and it's gonna look pretty cool. So we're gonna shoot at all the steady cam shop and then we're gonna go do some stick transition VFX shots and it's gonna be a lot of fun. This is like a backlight setup that you kind of have it set and then it works. Yeah, oh yeah. So another fun thing is when you're shooting in the studio, the purpose of putting lights in the ceiling is that you don't have to um, move them around a lot and you can just dim them on your app and stuff so it makes the process a lot faster like if we had like a key light or a book light or something it would always have to move right depending on where the set is so that you're always having like a sidey key on um, but this we just position the characters to where the backlight is and we can always hold that contrast so it makes it fast easy and looks good two one action That was perfect. And three, two, one, action. And push. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Nice. That was that was crazy. Crazy. Look at that bokeh, that's crazy. Dude, yeah, yeah. that Morpheus, yeah, yeah that'd that be kind of sick if you start with that, track, zoom yeah. out, you're we sitting on the TV, like, like, zoom out like, again, mask out with the shadows, oh, yeah. and that could, cause then you're keeping that matrix, bro, honey track, they sent me just a yeah, TV, yeah. Yeah. you get some like nice return from these white floors, yeah, oh, tons of return, yeah, especially with just that, like it gets rid of like the <laughs> eyebrow shadow, like eye socket shadow, Found a room with some really cool light, and uh, we're gonna try to get it before the sun goes away. So what's up, in Chris? So I found this room, and uh, there's some really cool light happening right now, and I thought it would be kind of cool to shoot like a, a random little performance scene in here because I think it's gonna look pretty cool. So it's happy accident. It's looking pretty cool with the hard sunlight here on this wall, and with some haze, it's, it's gonna look awesome. Yeah, these these are the best moments, man. It feels like. Yeah, just work with Mother Nature because she gives you some pretty cool moments with lighting that uh, when you can capture it right, it's, it's awesome. Like this would take a lot of work, like a lot of like big lights to get this. Like I've tried replicating this with like huge, huge lights and uh, it's a lot of work, but when you can get it and it's like a perfect position of the window versus the sun, 
Okay guys, we're back with some more commentary. We're into the next location and um, yeah, basically yeah, what's yeah, happening yeah, here, we found this cool garage and the location scout and um, the lighting setup was pretty simple. What we did was we blasted the 1200D as hard light through that window to get that really amazing volumetric lighting and then we just had a light mat to wrap that key light around. You can see on my left side that there's a light mat um, and we're doing a lot of handheld in here because he got kidnapped and he's tied up to the chair. So um, we kind of played around with some fun handheld. Um, another fun thing about the Alexa Mini LF, it's just so, so heavy and perfectly balanced. That handheld's so amazing. Um, here we're um, setting up a window shot. Basically, um, there's the girlfriend looking through the window at him and uh, now this is a really fun scene in this room um, this was a beautiful scene and a beautiful room and basically we just had the 1200D pushing through that window and I think I'm just talking about pushing another light to have a soft key which we didn't eventually use we just used the one light pushing through which is hard light um, the mini LF just really renders hard light so beautifully so we didn't have to diffuse it and there's the setup there's the 1200D through a CTO gel. Look at that. That's some shitty rigs right there. Um, here's Doug with the steady cam. He's coming in for this beautiful push in, revealing the girlfriend on the bed. And my gosh, that room was beautiful. I'll show you guys some footage of what it looks like, but oh my God, the wallpaper, the texture, so much depth. It was funny. We shot this at night, um, but we made it look like day very successfully, even though she was opening the blinds to go see him. Um, it worked out really, really, really nicely. Now is we're gonna cut down the light a little bit and soften it. Well, it's already pretty soft, but we're gonna use diffusion just to cut it a little bit um, because when she comes up to the window, it's a little too hot. So Peter over here is gonna help us with that. Okay, so I think my microphone on the day was very, very quiet. It was just not working, but Basically, I was just saying I was setting up the frame here just to kind of get a rough guideline of where I'm going to put the lights. We're going to place a moonlight here in this kitchen. And you can see Peter there. Um, he's raising up our uh, light and diffusion. Um, we had to get Mambo stands, which is like the tallest stand you can get um, because we measured that in the tech survey or the location scout, as you remember in the beginning of the video. So I knew that we needed a tall stand and there they are setting it up. There's the diffusion. Um, we set up the diffusion because moonlight is not hard um, and it's very soft and that's how I wanted it. Um, and I think in this clip, I was just saying the same thing. We were just trying to cut off the light and diffuse it because it looks really, really sourcey on that wood. Um, and then here's us actually filming it. Um, and it turned out pretty good. I wonder if I have some clips I could show you guys. Um, if I do, I'll add it here um but yeah and then we did a scene um same place but with uh just sodium vapor um color temperature or more warm orange just because he wanted the contrast between um the cold moonlight and that and then here we are in the next scene um this was the last scene of the day and this was like this little fireplace scene and it turned out really nicely and we just had one tube light it was very simple you can see the fire going and this is kind of this loving moment between the two characters. And uh, there's me rocking handheld with the Mini LF um, without any easy rig. Um, and uh, yeah, there's me checking the shot and everybody was really stoked on it, which was really awesome. Here we are, day two. Oh my God, very excited about this. Okay, so we started in this bathroom and what we're setting up right now is this thing called a pole cat. So a pole cat is basically this big pipe that you can um, squeeze between two pressure points and it uses pressure to basically stabilize and hold in place and what you can do there is rig up a light and we rigged up a tube light um, and the reason why we did that was because the steady cam was going to do a 180 around the character and we there was nowhere to hide the lights to make the light nice and backlit so you can see here there's the light rigged up there's me trying out the frame to see if i would see the light um and there's doug you know, getting ready with the steady cam. Just an awesome steady cam operator. If you guys are ever in Vancouver, Canada, you need to hire him. He's phenomenal. Um, but yeah, that's the bathroom scene. He's just balancing the steady cam. Um, you know, there's tons of little spots where you have to balance it. Um, and then 
I sent my gaffer Hunter to go pre-rig the next scene because we were a little bit behind, so I just wanted to catch up on the schedule. And what that is there is like a menace arm, but it's called a junior boom. One of the most handy tools ever. Um, it basically allows you to extend a light above the set. So you can see right there, it allowed us to extend the light above the set so we wouldn't see the light. And there, there you go. There's the shot um, with the light above it, the scene with the light above it. And um, it's just such a handy tool. There's me communicating to Doug what the shot's going to be. Uh, here's Doug talking about um, him balancing his Steadicam and how the arm that he's holding there, um, the Steadicam arm, how it basically suppresses the footprints um, and you don't feel it. Not footprints, but the footsteps. And then we chose to put the egg crate or the soft crate or the light tools. <laughs> I always forget the name. The light tools on that light mat. Um, just to get the spill off of all those little flower things hanging from the ceiling because it looked really saucy. And a thing you want to make sure of is you don't give away where your light sources are. Um, and my gosh, this location was so cool. Like I had my doubts in um, pre-production, but it was beautiful. With the Super Boltars, those lenses have the most beautiful quality and just worked so nicely with this texture. There's a few getting a light meter reading again. And we were going in for a close up here. So we do our wide shot first, and then we go in for a close up. And with the close up, I just brought in a diffusion just to soften the light a little bit because the light mat was a little bit too hard. Here's us putting some Vaseline or baby oil on our Lawa 12 mil, and we got the coolest effect. It was supposed to be like a POV shot. You can see us there. Um, there's the setup. We're just, just getting this um, really cool kind of blurry effect um, while the steady cam was getting balanced and there's our last one of our last shots of the day which was the steady cam shot and yeah it worked out so beautifully but that was the end of the shoot basically okay guys I hope you enjoyed this video um, I had a blast making it I know it was very raw very fun um, there's a lot of entertaining moments in there I hope you guys get a good insight of what it's like when we're working on set. Um, and one big thing when I was watching this back and watching all the footage is how important it is to build a team that is just rocks, that you can rely on, a team that, you know, is there for you even at 3, 4 a.m. It has the highest spirits and are just such incredible human beings and are really hard workers. I highly recommend surrounding yourself with people like that this team here made me excited to go to work every single day um and i realized on this shoot that teams really matter and uh who you work with really matter so yeah i don't know i really appreciate all the crew and everybody on this project so if you guys are watching i really appreciate you guys you guys are the dream team and i can't wait for the next project but uh leave a comment down below let me know what you guys want to see i would love to know more about what you guys want to see what you guys find interesting and um yeah I, this thing got stuck to my shoulder there i was just kind of like trying to brush that off um but yeah this is a really long outro but uh yeah leave a like give me a little subscribe you know maybe you know watch the previous video where we talk about the foundations of lighting and you know follow for some more stuff because i think there's gonna be some cool stuff coming along as always leave a comment i want to know i want to build a community i want to know what you guys want to see i want to know what you guys are interested in um and let's start talking let's start becoming friends i'd love that so see you guys in the next video see you later wow that was a long outro